Welcome back to the High Yield Video Question Bank series. If you're just joining me for the first time, this is the series of videos where I'm actually creating a question bank, but in video format. So instead of you having to fork up hundreds, if not thousands of dollars for overpriced question banks, you can simply come to my YouTube channel and work through individual videos and as individual questions and hopefully achieve the same thing. These questions are supposed to be third order questions, which are going to challenge your brain to recognize high yield patterns so that on test day, when you actually sit down to take your real exam, your brain is used to this way of thinking and therefore you'll get more questions right. Before I get into today's video, please remember to click the subscribe button, drop comments, hit the thumbs up. The more action on my channel, the higher up in the search results my videos will be and therefore more students will have access to premium free content and that is my goal. Let's get into today's practice question. So a mother presents to the obstetrics clinic for routine prenatal screening. She undergoes an ultrasound which reveals a congenital anomaly. The baby is diagnosed with a condition that arises due to the developmental failure of the ureteric bud and the metanephric mesenchyme. Subsequent genetic analysis reveals a RET, R-E-T, a RET defect, and it is determined that the mode of transmission was via autosomal dominant inheritance. Imaging is obtained, which reveals the image shown below. Which of the following correctly categorizes this defect? A, metaplasia, B, hypoplasia, C, aplasia, D, dysplasia, or E, hyperplasia. Pause the video if you want to think about it. But let's start going through this question. The correct answer in this practice question is C, aplasia. Now, of course, in order to get this question right, you have to look at the question stem, pull out information from the vignette as well as the image, and come up first with the diagnosis. Because only once you know the diagnosis can you then ask yourself, okay, what type of pathological changes in the tissue account for this disease? So in this question, the diagnosis is unilateral renal agenesis. And there's a couple ways you could have arrived at this diagnosis. One, let's just look solely at the question stem. Don't even look at the picture yet. Developmental failure of the ureteric bud and metanephric mesenchyme already, if you know your embryology, you know, limits what this possibly could be to a couple things. And then once I throw in that this is autosomal dominant and due to a RET defect, really honestly, if I didn't put the image in this question, you should have been able to, to work through this and say that's unilateral renal agenesis. But because that's a pretty challenging thing to do, I threw in the image. And on test day, it would be much more fair if you had this image. Now looking at the image, you can see exactly where the red arrow is that the left kidney is completely missing, okay? So it's just not there. That's the unilateral renal agenesis. And now once you know the diagnosis, you look from A to E and you ask yourself which one of those pathologic descriptions appropriately describes unilateral renal agenesis. And the only one here that applies is aplasia, which is just the complete failure of cell growth. But what I want you to do in order to develop these really high yield patterns of thinking is to ask yourself, hmm, even if I didn't know that this was unilateral renal agenesis, what might a question have given me if they wanted me to pick A, B, D, or E? And that's what we're going to do now. So let's reset this question and think about what possible diagnoses or what possible pathologies they would have given us if they wanted us to pick the other answers. So metaplasia, the best example of metaplasia is Barrett's esophagus. And if they're going to give you Barrett's esophagus, they're going to give you an image that looks something like this. The description might say metaplastic intestinal columnar epithelium with goblet cells replacing the normal squamous epithelium. But they're going to show you a picture that was taken during an EGD and they're going to put this in the question and you're going to have to pick metaplasia since it's Barrett's esophagus. So the normal lining of the esophagus is replaced by the lining of the stomach due to that really harsh acidic environment due to the reflux. Okay, so that's what you'll probably get if they want you to pick metaplasia. 
If they want you to pick hypoplasia, the best example of hypoplasia is a streak ovary in Turner syndrome. And what they'll do is they'll show you a gross picture like this, and the description might say, you know, ovaries with abnormal connective tissue usually unable to produce reproductive tissue. So they're not going to actually, of course, they're not going to give you the word hypoplastic, but the full description is hypoplastic ovaries. So these ovaries, they don't develop normally, usually, not always, but usually they're, they're you know, not able to produce the reproductive hormones. And in a gross picture, they're, they're described to be somewhat saggy, a little bit smaller, and embedded in this abnormal connective tissue sheath because, that, after all, that's what hypoplasia is. It's when the cells don't fully develop. So that's a streak ovary in Turner syndrome. So metaplasia is Barrett's esophagus. Hypoplasia is streak ovary. We already obviously talked about aplasia. And now let's look at choice D, dysplasia. So if they want you to pick dysplasia, they're probably going to give you CIN, also known as cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. So as you can see in the image, dysplastic cervical cells are the changes that you get in that precancerous stage leading up to cervical cancer. So if they give you an image, it might be a histological slide depicting some of the cervical cells or cervical tissue. And they could describe changes in that tissue as it leads up in its precancerous abnormal changes. So that's dysplasia. Dysplasia is abnormal or disordered cell growth that's usually precancerous. Lastly, let's talk about hyperplasia. If they want you to, to pick hyperplasia, usually the question will be alluding to endometrial hyperplasia. So you can see in this cartoon image that when the normal epithelium enlarges, you get endometrial hyperplasia. So these are just some of the, the foremost examples of different types of disordered uh, problems with the cells. And because they all end in plasia, you really need to keep it straight what the difference between these uh, different words are. So remember the prime examples of each one, especially metaplasia, uh, aplasia, and hypoplasia. Those, are, those tend to be the highest yield. But to be honest, all of these are fair game, so just make sure you can differentiate these in your head. Again, just to summarize, we talked about in this question, unilateral renal agenesis is an example of aplasia, and you should have been able to pick that out from both the vignette or the image in the question. That's it for this practice question. If you like this video question bank, please remember to subscribe. In the description of any video on my channel, you can find a Patreon link. Click that link to go to my Patreon page on Patreon, you can sign up to provide secure, safe monthly support of my channel. Anything you guys can do is so appreciated. But good luck and keep up the hard work.